So without further ado, I would like to introduce our first key speaker today. His name is Max Thompson and he is our chair of the Gladstone Regional Youth Council. Max will be talking about stereotypes, meditation, mindfulness, manners, breakdowns and stereotyping stigmas. Please welcome Max to the stage. Good day everyone and welcome to Avenue to Awareness 2020. The Gladstone Regional Council and Gladstone Regional Youth Council have amalgamated once again this year to discuss mental well-being. Before officially commencing, I would like to make an acknowledgement to country. So without further ado, I invite us to acknowledge the custodians of the land from which we gather, the Garang, Garang Garang, Bayeli and Terrabalung Bunda peoples. We pay respect to elders past, present and emerging, for they hold the memories, traditions, hopes and cultures of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples across the state. A better understanding and respect for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders peoples develops an enriched appreciation of Australia's cultural heritage and can lead to reconciliation. This is essential to the maturity of Australia as a nation and fundamental to the development of an Australian identity. Due to the nature of the topics that will be in discussion this evening, I advise all viewers feeling distressed to not hesitate to reach out and talk to a friend or family member. If you feel either isolated or anxious in doing so, you can contact Lifeline, Kids Helpline, Beyond Blue or eHeadspace. To launch into this evening's event, I'm going to discuss stereotyping and the implications it has on young people and how stereotypes have affected me personally. In today's multifaceted age, where a great proportion of us enjoy socially interacting through a flat interactive touchscreen, it comes to me as no surprise that the dynamics of society have altered. On that note, it's also not surprising to see how stereotyping has changed over the years as well. Throughout history, stereotyping has played a significant role in the way us humans act and think. Simply put, stereotyping is in our very human nature. It is understandable if we categorise a person as a nerd if they're introverted with a technical or scientific mindset or rich if they happen to always be catched up or even dodgy if we're always seeing them interact with random people coming in and out of a dark alleyway late at night. Ultimately, stereotyping can be useful in some situations. Determining whether people are hypothetically bad or good is extremely important in everyday socialising, but permanently assigning a particular judgement to a particular attribute based on its presence across a negative spectrum of associations is not fair. It's important to understand that every time we permanently associate a particular attribute as either bad or good, we're closing our minds and becoming biased. Personally, the concept of stereotyping is something I have struggled with in the past. And although I'm improving, I've still got a long road ahead of me. When it comes to social interaction, often my wording in a conversation can be either harsh or overkill. I never used to consider myself a bully or a negative person. However, in hindsight, maybe I was. From memory, my past was riddled with the joy of stereotypes. I used to make fun out of people or just pass unnecessary comments or judgments about people based off their physical, gender, racial or even religious traits. Due to this misguided mindset I had created for myself, I was never a person to get offended when someone tried to have a go at me. In fact, rather than having a sook, I would often just laugh or shrug it off. But little did I know, this was all going to change one day. For my last three years in primary school, I ran a garden club, socially constricted and playing to my own accord. In this club, I spent most of my lunch breaks learning the responsibilities of middle management. Above me were my teachers, and below me was any peer who entered the garden area. As a result of the intricate way I lived in my early years, where my brain was rapidly defined by all the interactions I had, I became a pretty stubborn and a pretty bad tempted character to be around. This led to complications such as my inability in differentiating between sarcasm and an intentional statement. After my primary journey came my unforgiving transition into high school, where I was a short, overweight young male with a shirt always tucked in, the highest socks in class and a very short crew cut. Golly gee. This is where stereotypes really started to affect me. Many people that didn't know me too well thought I was the smartest, most well-behaved student in the grade. My classmates on the other hand, well, they thought the exact opposite. This is where I realised the conundrum with stereotypes. Just because someone always has their socks pulled up with a shirt tucked in and a short haircut does not mean they're well-behaved or a genius. I know that I'm most certainly none of those. 
So after a couple more years of exercising my rights to be a bigoted, narrow-minded loudmouth, I made a commitment to proving to myself and others that I am better than stereotypes. I started practicing the three M's, meditation, mindfulness, and manners. Fortunately for me, I did not have to do this alone. I've had friends and family alike support me on my expedition to an open-minded mindset. In recognition of my hard work, grade 10 became my first ever year to achieve a golden academic award. In grade 11, I rose to the ranks of a martial arts senpai and was successful in my application to the National Youth Science Forum in Canberra. And this year in grade 12, I was appointed to the Gladstone Region Youth Council and eventually appointed as our chair by Mayor Burnett. In all honesty, I'm amazed by the power that living a life not dictated by stereotypes has. I'm also amazed by how far a little manners can really take you or how mindfulness and meditation can really change the effectiveness of your social interactions. Now, just to be clear, I'm not saying that the traits I've obtained through a little meditation, mindfulness and manners are perfect. I'm still and will always be on my journey to being the very best version of myself. So before I am hushed and seated, here are a couple things I would like you to take away and integrate into your own lifestyle if you haven't already. Number one, a few more manners goes a long way. Number two, stop judging and start listening. Okay, that's all from me. Thanks for your time and please enjoy the rest of the event.